Hello and welcome to our energy update of September 2024. My name is Corey Davidson and I am joined here by Yaila who will be doing our intuitive um, energy report and by Peyton who will be giving us a message from the Pleiades and I will be doing the astrology report, the intuitive astrology for September 2024. But before we start, remember to like, share, subscribe, hit those buttons. It certainly helps us get the message out to you. So why don't we start with Yaila? Thank you. Would you like to? <laughs> Thank you, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ladies. So good to see you both here. Very excited to um, share today's collective reading. So if you've ever watched our videos before, I just tap into the collective energy as we speak. So I will have my eyes closed from time to time. So let me just get prepared super fast and I'll connect in for the monthly reading for September 2024. Wow. Last quarter of the year. Can you all believe it? <laughs> Feels like it would play so fast. <laughs> okay. And of course, I always like to ask for a message for those of you tuning in. Creative all that is, please bring forth the information and any healing for your highest and best good. Please guide me with clarity and accuracy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So when I'm tapping into the energy for the collective, there's a few little colors going on, but I'm getting primarily blue, cobalt blue and green. So oftentimes when I see those colors, I, I get representations of the different chakras that are for the collective for September, 2024. The most, the strongest color that show, was shown to me was that cobalt blue color. And to me, that many times represents our throat chakra. So it is what we are speaking to the world. It's what we're speaking to ourselves, what we're sharing with each other. It's using our voice. It's sharing our truth and our, our authenticity. So that is the first energy I'm seeing. The second one was green and both colors are showing me like this dance between like a nice vivid, bright color to kind of like a muted, almost like darker color. Whenever I see muted or darker energies in with the colors, that lets me know that it's not fully the energy of like the the true truth of the person. Sometimes there's like outside influences muddying the waters, so to speak. Um, I'm seeing that more so with the green. Green to me represents the heart chakra. It's what we love. It's our desires. It's also about our health and our healing. So it feels like there's still a lot of people in their journey as far as um, last month, Peyton talked about a lot of people crossing over. It feels like that is continuing in the month of September, actually through the rest of the year into the new year. So for those of you watching this video, just really being mindful about your healing journey. And that's not just on a physical level, but that's a mental, spiritual, emotional level. So whatever is clicking for you as far as tuning up where you need just a little extra healing, a little self-care. This is just a little bit of wisdom for you that um, follow that intuitive nudge that you have for yourself. Um, but it's also about our heart's desires, right? So when I see the brightest green color for the collective, it's really following your heart. You've been getting a lot more intuitive nudges, a lot more downloads, really understanding your truth and you're understanding where you want to be sharing and focusing your time and energy. So that's what those main two colors are representing for the month of September 2024 for the collective. Let me just ask what to watch out for, um, what to watch out for. So beyond health, you know, that was one of the little messages. So watching out for where is your health? Where are you at in your healing journey? What needs a little extra attention? Mind, body, spirit. Um, Something else to watch out for is <laughs> just being shown. It's going to get interesting. And the, the main word I'm hearing is politics. So we've already started seeing some of politics get a little interesting at the moment. Watch out for getting swept into the political 
facades is the words they're giving me. So don't let what is being shown to you in media pull you off track from your heart's desires, knowing your truth and seeing the truth in other people. There's going to be a lot of shiny objects. There's going to be a lot of distractions. There's going to be a lot of um, things that are trying to pull your energy and your time into all these different areas. Watch out for that because it's not true truth. So um, I will share that. Anything else to watch out for, for the collective? Um, it feels like that spiral with people is still going to be a thing. So whenever it feels like when there's a lot of people that are transitioning over or in, I'm seeing just like a lot of transformation happening on personal levels. So relationships ending beginning, jobs ending beginning, um, a lot of like finalizations coming about and new beginnings coming about in the month of September. So when there is that transition time period, there's still a lot of swirliness because the rest of the world, the outside people, places, things are adjusting to those transitions and it can be really swirly for people. So some people can feel kind of caught off guard by beginnings and endings and that types of things. So just don't get pulled into the spiral of transition time. Um, let me just ask what is helpful for you to know for the month of September. The word that they're really bringing in strongly is time. You have time for all of it. Where are you investing your time? How are you spending your time with yourself? And how much of yourself, your time, are you giving to different things? So the message with time is like, it's helpful to understand your connection to your time. You have time for all of your heart's desires, if you are saying yes to those things that truly light up that heart chakra, truly light up your soul, feel light, feel good for you. And anything that feels crunchy, stagnant, or slow, or um, contracting, that is also something to look at. How much time are you giving that? So you have time for all of it, but if you choose your time wisely. So time is something very helpful to also pay attention to. Let me just ask for any last little messages for you, the collective for August, September, 2024. Um, the final message that I'm hearing is we are in a space of expansion and ascension. So you might have noticed this with yourself, with people around you, but there's a lot more people getting clued into the best way I can describe is truths of the universe, not just truths of like what they're being the propaganda or media or news outlets, or even just like people in their life are saying, but like truth with a capital T is how I like to describe it. People are really connecting to truth with a capital T. So no matter what is showing up, you're still understanding, feeling, knowing the truth and you are also recognizing who is seeing, feeling, embodying true truth. So it's an exciting time and ex expansive time because what is happening with the collective for those of you tuning in, I would wrap you in this group with Corey Payton and I, you're on a journey of really being your highest, truest, best self, whatever that looks like for you, right? You're on a journey to really embody your truth as a soul, really embody your love as a soul and how you show up in the world. And you are going to start seeing elements of other people, places, and things that vibe at that similar frequency to you. So it's an exciting time of expansion and ascension. You're going to be seeing a lot of truth. You're going to be seeing a lot of um, kind of the facades, the, the, the veils that have been around us for decades, centuries are starting to have holes in them, poke a holes in them, and some of them completely crumbling down. So just know in this transition time, there is a lot of truth. There's a lot of embodiment. There is a lot of stepping into your fullness, your authenticity. It's an exciting time for beginnings, um, endings. There's just a lot of movement going on in September. So 
Give yourself the time and space to listen to your heart, share your truth, listen to other people's truth, because they will also show you where they're at and what they mean and what they are embodying. And as long as you remember to take a pause, take a deep breath and roll with the flow, you'll have a great month of September. So that is my message for you today. Peyton, what do the peas have to say? Thank you so much, Yaila. I always love your readings because you take the words right out of my mouth or out of the Pleiadians' mouth <laughs> to be more accurate. <laughs> and today is no different. So, hey, y'all, I am Peyton and I am a Pleiadian channel. So, when I sat down to ask the Pleiadians what we can expect in September, the first thing they wanted us to know is we have to understand what we just came through. So they wanted to give us a little context because what we just went through in August is setting the stage for what is coming next. So if you are like me and like a lot of us, we kind of felt like August was a bit of a gut punch. It may have seemed to you like everything was going wrong. I know it certainly did for me. And I actually found myself two weeks ago having to sit down in the middle of my living room floor and just do nothing because everything I touched blew up. And I just had to say, Peyton, stop doing things, stop touching things, you're <laughs> just making it worse. So of course I reached out to the peas and I said, guys, what is going on here? Because this is extreme, even by extreme standards. So they came in and they explained what August and September are all about. And so if you're having a particularly rough go of it right now, according to the Pleiadians, what is happening energetically is we're putting ourselves through a bit of a test. And that is to see if we are ready for the next level of consciousness. And the way this test works is it wants to see how we respond to things. So the universe threw everything it had at us to see, what are you going to do, girl? Are you going to act like your old 3D self or have you changed? So what does this mean? What is the difference between our old 3D reaction when things go wrong, as they certainly seem to in August, or do, do you act from a higher dimensional perspective? Well, of course, our old 3D reaction was when something went wrong, first of all, we freaked out right? We would get mad. We would get scared. We would get all obsessing about it in the mind. It's all very mind-based. And then we would try to take physical action, usually while we were out of alignment. And it didn't really work great. But we are finding that that way of responding to things doesn't work in the current consciousness grid. So what we are being challenged to do in August and September is to respond differently from the level of consciousness that we actually are now. So what does that look like? What is a 5D or just higher dimensional way to respond to challenges? Because we're seeing a lot of them in our quantum reality, right? In the world around us. Well, the universe is looking to see, can we stay neutral? When things start to melt down, can you stay calm? Can you get in your heart? And can you sit with the energy of the problem without trying to fix it. Because as we do that, as we hand over the problem to our higher self and then take action from a state of alignment, we get very different results. And so what we were noticing in the August energies, especially if you were someone who really faced a lot of challenges, is you were testing yourself to see if you could act from a higher level of consciousness. So what you may have noticed, if you were able to stay calm, no matter what was happening, what was melting down, what was breaking, is that the problems resolved almost instantly. So we're being shown right now in these energies, a different way to navigate life. And as things start to start to and continue to kind of melt down in our world around us, this is what we are being challenged to do, to respond differently. Because as the peas always tell us, it's all you. So as we are moving forward, we're going to continue to have this opportunity to respond differently. And the universe is going to meet us. It's going to show us that when we stay calm, we stay in our heart, we stay focused on, as Yagila was saying, what we want to create, what happens is 
the problems are going to melt from our path very easily. But if we go back to the old way, we do it the hard way, the 3D way, the lessons are going to come back around. And I don't know about y'all, but I don't need to see these things again. So please just show me the new way to react and I am on board. So that is gonna be continuing as we move forward into September. So if you're finding things are still a little bumpy in your life, or maybe you're just getting stressed out by what you're seeing in the world, this is the opportunity you're giving yourself. Can you respond differently? So big thing that's happening right now, and as we start to move into these September energies, the Pleiadians say they are going to feel much lighter. They are going to feel joy-based. We're actually going to start seeing some miracle energy. So that is good news because August was a little bruising for a lot of us. So hearing that things are going to get easier is, I don't know, it's always a win in my book. Now, there's one other big thing that the Peas wanted to bring our attention to. And Yaila touched on this as, of course, our messages always seem to line up. But one of the big things we're going to be moving through as a collective is we are breaking down the collective human contract of illness, of disease. And so that's why for so many people, issues with the body are so in our face right now. Because as a collective, we are splitting in deciding whether or not we agree with this as part of our future reality. So a lot of star seeds and light workers are breaking down and opting out of this collective contract. Because for most of us, getting old, getting sick, dying, we just thought it was the inevitable part of being human, right? Part of the human definition, as the peas like to say, it is not. It is not energetic fact. It's just a human story. It is just a human collective agreement. And a lot of light workers and starseeds are breaking that down. They're saying, I don't need to learn through suffering in the body anymore. So if you are someone who is working on opting out of this collective contract, one of the cool things we are going to start to see happening in September, according to the Pleiadians, is spontaneous healing. Those issues that you have carried in your body for so long that have caused physical suffering. And so many of us, especially if you're a starseed, have had issues with the body. The peas say a lot of us are starting to opt out of that. We're saying we don't choose that as our future human reality. And so what happens is we start to see magical changes in the body. Now, of course, we are also going to see people on other timelines making different choices. We are seeing that in the quantum reality with people doubling down, really going down that rabbit hole. And we are getting bombarded with a lot of shiny toys from our media platforms, inviting us to continue to buy into this storyline. But as the piece say, it is always your choice what you believe. And this is a human contract that is up for renegotiation right now. But as we start to set very clear intentions as to what we want for our bodies in the future, we can start to make radical changes. So we're going to start to see some very cool healing opportunities in the September energies. So all in all, we are starting to break down some of those kind of undesirable human contracts, and it's really time to let some of those go. So we are going to be in a healing mode in September. So and that is what the peas wanted us to know for both the August energies of what we have just come through and for the September energies that we are walking into. So that's what the peas have for you for September. Corey, how is the astrology looking? Well, thank you so much for that, Aiden. And Yaila, of course, it always coincides with the astrology. And so this is the astrology for September 2024. And you won't be surprised because, well, the ladies have already given bits and pieces of it, just in a different modality. This is why we love doing it. So, and that's why we love being together. So anyways, September 2024. Well, we're going into eclipse season. Eclipse season, eclipse season. Yeah, and why not? So the first part of, of September is Virgo season. And Virgo season is that earth energy. It rules our health, ladies, right? Health, 
being of service, organizing, getting things done. Right, ladies? Okay, so that's the first half of September. And then the second half is Libra. We'll be going into the Libra season. And that's an air sign. And that is the scales of justice, balance. Um, could even be a little codependency, but it's really a lovely sign. It's the break that we need, honestly. However, the month starts off with a bang. It really does, because on the 1st of September, Uranus goes retrograde in Taurus. And that will be until January 2025. So Uranus is that you know, it's the planet of independence and sudden changes and shock and surprises, the internet, electricity. And Taurus rules our values, money, the earth, food. So, you know, those retrogrades, you know, this one will be about reevaluating our finances and what we value. Could even be, you know, our health right? Because it will be going during Virgo season, reevaluating what kind of um, food you value, your health, right? And on the same day, Pluto is already retrograde. It's already, it's retrograde in Aquarius. But on the first, it is going to go back, retrograde back into Capricorn. And what does this mean? Well, it's at the last degrees of Capricorn, which means it's the strongest part. This is the final rec reckoning of Pluto. So it's in the last degrees, 29 degrees of Capricorn, until October 12th, where it goes direct until November 19th, still Pluto and Capricorn. Now, we've been Pluto in, in Capricorn since 2008. So if you think about what's been going on since 2008, this is the final reckoning. It's the final reckoning of big government, big pharma, um, corporate control, Big tech, um, Capricorn rules the structures. So, Yaela, when you're mentioning mentioning about, you know, um, politics, you know that's our government. Pluto and Capricorn uh, is Pluto is those hidden secrets. So it Pluto forces all those subconscious hidden secrets up so that they can be revealed. But the wonderful thing about it is that it sets, it brings it all up so we can have a rebirth. Pluto represents transformation. I always think of SpongeBob, transformation, right? <laughs> Imagination, you know? You know, after uh, November, you probably won't see me do that again because I've been doing it for a long time. Still love it. I'll miss it. So Pluto will be going retrograde on the 1st into Capricorn. So we will be seeing a lot of uprising at the last degrees, which is actually a great thing because it's moving us into Pluto in Aquarius, the age of of Aquarius, right? Peace, love, Bobby Sherman. For those of you who remember Bobby Sherman is. Um, and then on the second, we have, uh, we have a new moon in Virgo. So it gives us the opportunity to focus on our health, right? Peace talked about our health. Yaila talked about our health and taking care of our health. It's about also, you know, our habits, our day-to-day -day habits, um, getting things, you know, uh, going, organized, you know, our health habits, um, our organizing habits, our day-to-day -day habits. So the new moon in Virgo um, is right along with, you know, what Peyton and Yaila were saying, you know, 
know, take care, watch out for your health. You know, take care of yourself. And with the, you know, with the Uranus uh, going retrograde uh, in Taurus, that's our food supply. So there might be some things come out about our food supply, uh, giving us answers as to we eat healthy. Why am I not feeling it? Uh, and then on the fourth, Mars will go into Cancer, which is, it's going to be yummy. Because Mars is that output energy. Cancer is the home. We also have here in the United States, it's our Pluto return. So Cancer represents our home, your home country, your home personally, and communication, you know, feelings. A lot of feelings because Mars is that output and cancer is water. So it's a great time to express your feelings and to put work into your home. You know, getting things balanced, getting things organized in the home. And then on the 17th, we have a full moon lunar eclipse. There it is. It will be with Saturn and Neptune. They will all be in Pisces. And it's going to square Jupiter, which makes everything bigger. The square makes it uh, uh, an effort. You have to make an effort, makes it a challenge. But a lot can be accomplished in a square aspect. So Jupiter's going to make it all, all much bigger the moon, Saturn, which is the restrictor, and Neptune, which is illusions um, that rules Pisces, square Jupiter. Because of that square, you know, hold on to your hats. We have big transformation energy in, in, in September. And, you know, this is an indication of the rose colored glasses coming off. Because Neptune in Pisces is that rose-colored glasses, you know, seeing things the way that we've wanted to see them, not the way that the reality of them, uh, the reality of situations are. If you haven't chosen, it might be the time that you choose your reality in what timeline you want to be on. It's certainly big energy to do that. So... We might be seeing some harsh realities with this full moon lunar eclipse um, about a lot of the things that have been swept under the carpet a little too long. So the opportunity there is to embrace a new reality, to validate the reality and the timeline that you've chosen. But nonetheless, it's all happening on the 17th. And then on the 22nd, busy month in September, um, the sun goes into Libra, which will actually be nice. It's the fall equinox. So fall equinoxes or equinoxes are about resets, starting over, balancing things out. Okay, so we have the sun going into Libra with the fall equinox. Venus too will also go into Scorpio. So still Pluto rules Scorpio. So we have a lot of those aspects still happening. And then on the 26th, Mercury will enter Libra. And Libra is the scales of justice. Libra also, you know, is, is great at weighing things out. Should I, shouldn't I, you know, I don't know. I think I'm right. I think you're wrong. So watch out for the need to be right or to call somebody wrong. This is a great time to find the balance to, as the, uh, was it the piece or Yaila said, um, to really listen to one another. We all can have our own opinions and come to uh, an agreed um, conclusion as to a direction that we want to go to 
but the bat we've been in this battle of I'm right, you're wrong, you know, I'm good, you're bad. And this beautiful Mercury in Libra and the sun entering Libra with that fault equinox resetting everything it gives us that opportunity to hear one another out to hear both sides and not make anybody wrong or right or good or bad but to come together as a collective so that we can all move forward um least and, and like i said libra also rules the scales of justice so there might be some things coming out um not to justify things <laughs> but to weigh it out and to do what is fair and what is right not right what is just so i'm going to pull a couple of cards uh for September to see how we could use some support some additional information and what this one is from the crystal intentions oracle they give us a crystal um, but also a message so improve timing can't make this stuff up increase the occurrence of synchronistic opportunities be inspired with creative ideas. Develop understanding of various cultures and spiritual philosophies. What? Can't make this stuff up. Oh, and it's my favorite stone. I am always at the right place at the right time with the right people. And it's turquoise, which is, of course, my favorite stone. So turquoise is also the stone of protection. American, Native American Indians paint their doorways with turquoise to keep the bad spirits out. Turquoise, of course, is, it is my favorite color and it's my happy color. And every time I wear it, when I have job interviews or meeting somebody for the first time, it always helps me feel aligned with the right people at the right time, at the right place. So pick up some turquoise. It'll help to support you during um, the month of September. And then one more. Um, I Love Me by Kyle Gray, Angels and Ancestors deck. It's my first Kyle Gray deck. I love it. So let's see what we have. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Well, here we go. We have the seer. See beyond the current situation. So as the peas said, and as Jaila spoke about, you know, with all the energy going on, and yes, all the political media voices and energy going on. Be the seer. See beyond the current situations, which is we're moving into that age of Aquarius and where it's the power to the people. That's what Aquarius rules is community technology, all coming together for the betterment of the whole. So I love this card. So be the seer, see beyond the current situation and stay on your path, no matter what it appears is out there. So that's what I've got for um, my astrology, September 2024, September. Ladies, do you have anything to add? I'll add one thing, Corey. Please, Please never stop saying imagination. <laughs> Transformation, it always makes me smile. <laughs> I 
just can't help myself. <laughs> and also, you know, this actually just popped in my mind too when you were describing it. Who was Bobby Sherman? Because that, I don't know him. Like the name I know I've heard, but yeah, what's the ref? Why do you say peace, love, No idea. <laughs> okay, so Bobby Sherman... Um, it was, I believe, in the 70s where there was uh, the Partridge family. So um, there was all the the, uh, the the pop stars, you know, the teen, the teenage heartthrobs of, of the 70s. And Bobby Sherman was one of those teenage heartthrobs of the 70s where we had all those posters like Farrah Fawcett had her poster and um, you had um, uh, uh, anyways, the, one of the kids from, you know, the Partridge family, David, um, remember his name? Anyways, but Bobby Sherman was a teenage heartthrob in the 70s. So people just like loved him, idolized him, wanted to be him, wanted to hang out with him. Like he was just like the end all be all of cool. It's the end all be all. You know, all the young girls were like. <laughs> <laughs> One of the teenage heartthrobs. Yep. Um, you know, there was a magazine called Tiger Beat. Where all the, you know, the, the teenage heartthrobs were on and you could you know look in there and, and it would like a poster would come every month you know tiger beat so mm -hmm. it was made for the teenagers yeah it's a teenage heart i love it thank you for explaining <laughs> <laughs> thank you for asking i know it ages me but you know i was young then i wasn't quite a teenager but yeah. <laughs> anything else ladies all right. Well, thank you so much for listening in to our September 2024 energy update. And we're so grateful that we get to do these videos for you. And remember to like, share, and subscribe. And we'd love your comments. Please don't not comment. But uh, please comment because we love your comments. And so until next month be good to yourselves stay in the love frequency bye for now <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs>